<laughs> love, metal, or love, metal, right? Is that I love metal? <laughs> I love no metal. Yes. Hey. Hi. Hola. Hi. Como esta, señor? How are you doing, buddy? Buenos dias. Muy bien. Good morning Excellent. to you. You need to scoot in, bro. I'm trying, bro. Come on, man. Getting my red juice. Oh yes. Oh, we've uh, the chicks have we have we have uh, switched the checks. I am now Zavan being checked out, and he is too sexy because he's for this check. mug for a mug. Jace. Welcome, welcome everybody. to the knocked conscious. Yeah, this one's a serious one, man. Well, we hope to do some good, like usual, right? We try. Yeah. Look, man, we love human interest stories and uh, and humans. Make, yeah, we're. We're okay with humans. I mean, we'd, we'd love to them to be more like aliens. We wish them well, right? Yes. We oh. do not wish any ill will on anyone. Not a single will of ill. Correct. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah. And um, this is yours. This is your baby. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like diapers, bro. Bro, I don't even like you. <laughs> I don't even want a beer. <laughs> I'm not supposed to beer today. Supposed to beer. So what are we talking about? That's your, you, bro, oh, you're are steering. we jumping right into this? We're not going to even have bullshit chit chat at the beginning? Well, no, we also have, we always have bullshit chit chat. <laughs> Look, we're just going to say this. This was recorded, a, the, this was recorded the week of the first, of the Tuesday following the first Monday in November and it's over and now we can breathe and just have, we can just like relax for fucking some time, right? Can we just relax? Uh, at least about. Let it go. Um, I would go. say 14 months. Yeah, oh, sixteen yeah. months because then the new political ads for the next election start. Yeah, for and the then, two year. Yeah. Uh, can I tell you a funny text message I got from somebody? I would love. A it funny said, text "I'm message. so happy to not see a political ad, but see an ad for diarrhea products." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that shit made me. I fucking cracked up. I was like. I've never been so happy to see a diarrhea commercial. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. I was looking for that one where, you know, you'd be assigned a female at birth. I was oh, looking for that, I haven't seen that, that one after the election commercials. They pulled it, bro. Oh, they did. Okay. Remember, that's why I, I hunted it and had to find it because, you know, yeah. you know that's, a, that's how it that's is. That's a terrible oh, word choice, bro. By the way, Jace? be prepared for more of that. Oh, assigned at birth? Uh, identity. Oh, identity. But any, uh, so ID check. You and I, we've talked about All like our us. kind of spiritual stuff, like the empath stuff. The energy was just shit. We're just going to talk about the energy part. Just, People are losing their fucking minds. Everyone, can okay, we just relax? On. So this is being released in December, right? Yeah. So currently you're talking about the first week of November. Right. The week the election of the Tuesday week. following the first Monday in November. Okay. The election week. The election week. Okay. I just, of, an, of America. Right. Of, of the, the United, United States. States of America. I'm not going to talk about the players involved. That's not what it is. It's about the feel of the energy. Of the surrounding area, the atmosphere. I agree. It's, it's, it's been weird, dude. It's just been heavy. Yeah. Heavy, dark, like scared. I don't, there wasn't, there didn't seem to be positivity on either uh, for anywhere, for anyone. So it's over now. We can Yay, now move forward. We're so happy. Yay. We're going to even give it that. Congratulations <laughs> uh, that people can count pieces of paper and finally come up with an answer. A friend of mine said yesterday, I was chatting with him on the phone and he said somebody brought up politics at work and he said he has to go into his office because of his job. And he said, he didn't tell me what side the person was on. Yeah. He said, he responded to that person. He says, dude, shut up. I don't care. I don't like any, the, either of them. I don't care who wins. Just shut the hell up. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I love you so much. Cause I love that answer. Yes. Like I loved him before, but I loved him even more. Yeah, I That's tell him. <laughs> it's awesome. My friends are funny. <laughs> I love it. I do so, too. Like, fuck, just man, just be excellent to each other. You know, that's all we got. So it's fuck it. I I agree. And fuck it. Let's fucking high five on Boom, that, skis, bro. Bitches. I was also at work this week. I'm so sorry. You okay? And I was not feeling well on on Monday. I felt okay. Is it coming, a tumor? Well, coming out of last Wednesday when I had that sorrow we spoke of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about and your dog, And we're going to do dude. it because it's, it's not conscious. So if I may share that story. Yeah, of course, okay. dude. No. Um, last Wednesday, I, you and I, you've you seen the precognitive stuff I get. I don't know how I get it or why, but it's there. It's real. Whatever it is, we don't know. But um, 
you know that song House of Pain, Jump Around? Jump around, jump up, jump up and get down. Of course I know okay. that song. Everyone knows that song, That's right? It's on Jock Jams. Uh, <laughs> Which volume 17? Uh, 18, 19, or 20. Okay, it's now up in the we, teens. Now, now that's what we call mu- like barely music volume 86 now. So I have I'm, that tape. I'm seeing Jump Around and my eyes are just shooting water out of them. I am so sad and so like I was so hurt something was wrong i'm like why am i singing jump around and crying like an eight-year-old with a skin knee you know what i mean so uh i talked to magsy and we have a 14 year old dog and a 12 year old dog and i'm and the 14 year old dog had some stuff about a month ago but he started getting medication he was like a puppy the last month it was so beautiful that we had that extra month with him but um he was so vibrant and everything and i looked at her and i just said i'm completely lucid tears are running down my face and I'm like, something's wrong. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what I just feel it. Right. Yeah. We've had that feeling. So if you come across something that happens, can you help me validate what I'm feeling? Right. I, I think I use the term like global sorrow. It was pretty intense and we lost our dog on Friday. So like a day and a half later, he, that night, the next night he got sick and we, we lost him. So it, it was Megzi's first dog. I'm sorry that I'm bringing this up, Magsy. We love you. For real. And, and Gabe loves you. So that's it. But it was one of those weird things where it just like lined up. And I'm going to tell you one offline because I'm not, we're not getting political. So Yeah, good idea. <clears throat> None of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm such a big dog person that. And thank you for uh, your. Of course. I mean, I really, man, it's really, it's so, so hard to. There's such a big part of your life. For so long, I mean, my last dog, Nina, I had for 16 years. That stupid little dog went with me everywhere. She went with me to Nashville and back in the truck. And and she's been in every drive through on I-40 and ate a lot of lit Taco Bell that fell on the floor. And she was amazing. And I was so grateful to have her. And I've had rocks for 12 years. And she's the best smushy face, 65-pound nut job. But she's my nut job. You know what I mean? And so I get Megzi's. I get the pain and I, I get the joy that those little creatures bring to us. So she was very lucky to have her for 14 years, have him yeah. have Gabe. And I, and I get the pain, you know? Yeah. Well, it was, he, he had, he was getting a large heart and they thought there were fluid in lungs. When we took him about a month ago, he was breathing really heavily and they put him in like pure oxygen overnight. Like Jeez, we thought dude. we might've lost him that. And what's crazy is they gave him this thing and they had some medication. He came home he was so not the dog that I, that we had the last few months. Yeah. He was like a pup. He was jumping up. He was like running around. Like it, we got an extra month with him. That's cool. And I'm so blessed that Megzy got an extra month with him Yeah, because that was her first. And you know, we, we miss you. And she, she looks, she's like, you know, I'm going to see him again. Right. I'm like, yeah, he looked at you the way souls look at souls that, are going to see each other again. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's true because the other one doesn't, well, she can't see, but well, she doesn't, she never looked, they were never like that. Which, yeah. What Megzy had with Gabe is yeah. special and it, it will always be. So thank you for allowing me to just of course, jump dude. in with that. That's but, a, I mean, that's a story that anybody that has a pet or, you know, that's so, you know, cats and dogs and whoever, you know, people I know, I've got a good friend that's, that adores his bird, you know, and, I think that's there is my bird. Not like that. Oh. Um, just, just step different. So, you know, and that's awesome. And I, I love that, the devotion that we have to our animals and yeah. the devotion the animals have to us. And no matter how bad your day is, you get home and those little butts wiggle. And man, that makes your, it changes your world. You know, it, 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 you're like, man, they're, they're so happy to see me no matter what. Yeah. And I love, it's just, man. It's beautiful. It's, yeah. I don't have that. And and I'll get vilified for it. I I just don't have. Yeah. I don't know why. And and I I'm clear about it. I don't walk around kicking animals. Okay? Well, no shit. But, but you're I just, just not a you're not a dog person. I just don't have that. That's cool. I tried. That's okay. Remember, I tried. Yeah. And I felt so bad kenneling him for like 14 hours because of work. Like I just it didn't feel right for myself in my life. But watching Megzi with hers. I can live vicariously through her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. she'll sit there and read and she's just sitting there and she has a dog on each side and she's patting him and she just, she's at peace, like to your point, right? right? Like, you know how you, I, watching her the way she feels from it, 
that's what I love about it. So yeah. thank you know, thank you for that. Absolutely, man. You know? They're amazing little amazing little creatures. Yeah. I'm gonna get sea monkeys for her next. Fuck yeah, sea monkeys. Aren't they just like particles in water? I'll send you the website. They're floaties, bro. Floaties. <laughs> not not big. They're tiny. No, tiny, not the tiny ones tiny you put floaties. around the little three year old's arms in the pool. <laughs> oh, they're super tiny. Dude, those are water wings, they're bro. Like, they're those are they're like microbes, bro. <laughs> By the way, did you see a microbe something? I saw like a microbes podcast or something. It was pretty funny. I saw it on South Park last night. They talk about microbes. They huh? did. We need it the t shirt. It was okay. hysterical. We're, are we doing the t shirt? We're doing yes. the t shirt. We need help. Can I will have Mary, our super senior executive producer, take a look at it. Okay. We need we need to find a pass through merch shop that people can buy our Let me talk to Knocked Mary. Conscious and the Googles of Beer. I will make notes. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's so I forget I, shit all I'm the time. so grateful. You wait. No, you Mary, don't. I do. You have to remember Mary, shit before you forget it first. Merch. I can't wait to hear stories about other people and what they forget. Don't do it. I'm not. That's why I just why can't we tease? All right, you bit. ready to go? Yeah, bro. Today's topic, dude. What's about today, man? Um, and it's not conscious. It is correct. It's, okay. It is a bit of a serious topic, and it. I'm I'm sad to just say that there are some sad points to it. The Department of Redundancy Department. Uh, the long term effects of COVID from a non medical perspective, specifically, how do I say it? Uh, mental illness. Uh, there's a bunch of obviously medical side effects of COVID that you can read on the internet. There's a bunch of side effects uh, like the the effects of the financial industry. The how is your work going to change? Are you the one that cracked me up is that in the past ten years in when you go to work they've been moving towards more open floor plans that sh which never was my choice because I don't want to smell some dude from three rows over right. And I want to have some privacy so that I can focus and do my job. And you don't want to hear someone clipping their fingernails <laughs> like four four houses, like four buildings oh, over because it's all open I didn't floor. even think about that. But yes, I don't <laughs> want. Misophonia strikes again, I sir. Yeah, so it's so I funny love this how black background stuff because now they can see we could sign language and like I don't. I probably just told someone to f off, but uh, anyway. So I thought it was so funny that as soon as COVID hit, the open floor plans are gone, and of course. Billions of dollars were spent on open floor plans to try to get a more collaborative environment for employees so that it's et cetera. You can read all about open floor plans. So and now that shit is by so I find that hysterical. But and we can talk about other things besides the mental illness aspects if you want. But I want to make sure we cover it thoroughly because that's where that's the original idea of like, OK, let's just let's just take. X number of percent of the population is not going to get COVID, but they're going to have side effects of being stuck inside, of of having to wear a mask, of being social distance, which I hate that term, of... And being stuck inside is actually more detrimental because vitamin D being created by the sun yes. and UV rays yes. killing the virus. Uh, hello, those are two pluses to be out. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more, let alone... You're wearing a mask, and then what about the people that are wearing masks at the gym, wearing masks playing sports? You're you're actually hurting yourself because you're not getting the oxygen you need to breathe correctly, and you that those articles are online as well. So that's especially for kids. So and that's all in my notes as well. But we, there's a bunch of different effects of COVID that are not medical. So if, if somebody gets COVID, yeah, there are long-term side effects. That's not what I want to talk about. Those are horrible. I'm not discounting those, but I think there's other things that are possible in the coming months and years, perhaps decades. You know, how is this younger generation, the people that are five, 10, 20 years old, how are they going to be shaped by 2020 yeah. from a non-medical perspective? That's, that's, that's a long introduction to a topic. No, I love it. I didn't use a um, comma or anything. What I'd like to add to is uh, because we're, I'm going to start putting the date on our podcast. So today Good is the 7th of November. Yes, sir. In what year? 2020. 11-7-2020. The reason we're going to talk about that today, it was called, 
uh, the election specifically was called oh, today sure. for whoever it was. It was called. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that. But there is a politicization too that we're going to get into yeah. that I will talk about. I'm not. We're not going to talk about specifics, but it is a general thing that's very important. May I share a story about COVID and how it affected me directly? Is it about politics? No. Okay. How it affected me directly? Okay. Bro, I will. I'm tentative with my approval so, of your question. There's a group called Venture X. They're they're good. They're a reputable company. I'm not speaking poorly. I'm I'm saying their name because I hope that they can make things work. Are you familiar with work uh, workspaces where people you know the co co op co work places that start you popping share up? Share a desk. Yeah, we oh, work. You no, mean, you come in. You 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 rent it for you know hundred bucks a month, and you can get get a desk at any time of day. Yes, you yes, get a I key. Am. You yes, go I in. Yes, you I use am. a printing. You get to use their coffee, and you get to use their internet yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I actually had an idea and I reached out to Venture X before the whole COVID hit, like December. Huh, fucking brilliant, Mark. Brilliant. My plan was to actually have it was gonna be designed for independent journalists, but it would work for anyone. But I would actually I was gonna build like four or five podcast studios, very similar to like what we had here. Oh. And I was gonna try to get interns from the Walter Cronkite School at yeah. ASU and like have like a collaborative thing where we work together with producers and we you could rent the studio out and I and almost make it like a podcast community we work kind of thing. I had this real huge idea. Obviously that would have taken a lot of work and I would have been into it if it had started, but then COVID hits. No one's going to fucking go yeah, in that building. Of course. So like the whole, the whole concept, all the WeWorks, the co-works, those are completely currently eradicated. Correct. Just, it was just a point because I still get something from VentureX going, Hey, you still interested? And I'm like, sorry uh, to ghost maybe you, bro. In a year. I'm not even interested because this could pop up another way, another time. It I'm, I'm gun could. shy now. So yes. I know it's every hundred years, but it could happen. In no, five. but they, I mean, how long have... How long, I don't even understand how to ask my own question. How long has the term superbug been around? How long has know. that been? I mean, 15 years? Yeah, maybe. The so, superbug just seems weird. I mean, but, but the see, Spanish you, flu, right? You was see a big my one. point about how, okay, anti antibiotics are, are so mainstream and they're yeah. not as effective as they used oh, yeah, to be MRSA. anymore. Look at MRSA right now. So you know, it's it's almost as if the COVIDs of the world, you know, whether it's the swine flu, COVID, MRSA, SARS, uh, the avian flu. Checkmarkitis. Yeah, that's my favorite. And there's no, what I love most about checkmarkitis, there's no cure, bro. It's the best. You just have to immerse yourself in it. You just have to accept that you are going to speak like this for the rest of your life. And just love. It's like an amazing lotion, and you just put it on the skin and put it in the basket. You put it, it on your skin, and, and it's like it's like Fortu looking for the greatest gift in the world. Yes, it's amaze balls. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed. Did we already say that we, we switched, switched our, We switched mugs? We crossed particle streams? Yes, sir. Literally? Okay, Salud. Okay, cool. Um... To, so just to finish up before we jump into the main subject, the um, I mentioned open floor plans. How is how are companies going to do business differently? You know, everyone has proven they can work from home. Okay, that's no shit, right? We we already we knew, we kind of already knew that, but now companies realize that that's a real, real, real possibility. So that's going to shape the way companies do business, literally. For sure. So. Um, obviously, we could talk about that for two hours. I just wanted to bring it up. Um, a couple and it's very important that we talk about it today, once again, because there are going to be very, very rapid changes in specific states because of what happened today. I'm not kidding. I, if, I know you don't want to address. I don't want to talk about politics We're not gonna ever. Talk, but you don't want to acknowledge. But you have to acknowledge that this is fact, and it was used very, very oh improperly. God, shut up. What? It was used improperly. You don't agree with that statement as a whole? Of I do. We but love I don't. humans. We just want everyone to love each other, bro. Can I go now? But I cut my hair. It looks great. And sold it so that I could buy you this gold chain for your watch. What? <laughs> the gift of the Magi, bro. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, dude cuts his hair. Or no, woman cuts her hair to buy a gold chain for his pocket watch. Dude sells his pocket watch to buy a golden hair clip for her hair. Oh. And they both fucked each other. 
is that like they're both fucked out of love is, basically it's saying love sucks love stinks, love stinks. Yeah, is that kind of yeah, like yeah. uh the what's the pina colada song yeah, the when they place yes. an ad and yeah. it turns out hey, I want to cheat on my wife. I want to oh, cheat on my you? wife, and then oh hey shit! Now you, we're together. You like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, you whore. Oh, and, sorry. And like it never happened. Yeah, right. So now we're working together until the next time that Tinder comes on. <laughs> I'll swipe. Imagine that shit. See, that's the even oh, funnier. Oh shit! That's they, the Tinder of they 1975. Need do, they need to do a new pina colada song. Yeah, it's called the and Tinder colada. If you like to do the ecstasy. No, it's Tinder Colada, Shooting bro. Shooting in the rain. Do, 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 boom. You have a lovely voice, check mark. Oh, okay. So, thank you. you. You are welcome. So to finish up on the financial slash working part of it, working from home, open floor plans, the last thing I thought was that was very important is the number of people that have lost their jobs this year or were furloughed for X number of whatever, you know, the airlines are furloughing people, and then they get rehired a few months, not rehired, but they go back to work. Did those people that were furloughed lose their health insurance for a period of time? If you got laid off, you definitely lost your health insurance. So what is the long-term effects of that? What so right. or had to pay for it out of yes, pocket? Correct. That difference, like correct. I think you're protected Absolutely. for like six months, but you still have to pay your own. Correct. So on top of not getting an income, correct, you're now paying double what you were paying. Correct. Or tr whatever the num whatever the whatever whatever the uh, employer's portion would be, I guess would be the absolutely the answer. right. Um, yeah, so you're go like you're accruing debt like nobody's business. Meanwhile, interest rates plummet because of shitty economy. Sky uh, housing markets skyrocket, and there's going to be another bubble. And the sky will fall. It's going to happen, boys and girls. Don't don't kid yourselves. Uh, it happens in cycles all the time. Well, that's yeah, true of all the markets. Yeah. So what I one quote that I'd like to go over, which was on the BBC regarding that last um, point about uh, medical insurance. This COVID has also generated important spillover quote or indirect effects by decreasing the supply of altering patient demand for non COVID-19 related medical care. As a result, patients are postponing or, or foregoing a wide variety of services, ranging from emerg emergency treatment of acute conditions to routine checkups to recommended cancer screenings. So because of COVID, and I read, there's four articles I read about people not going to their doctor, not going to get a checkup, not going to do cancer screenings, what, a, a myriad of things, because they were scared they were going to get covid because they, they won't go to the doctor's office. They won't go to the urgent care. They won't go to the hospital where their doctor's located for something that's routine because they're scared of COVID. And you're only looking at it from the patient side. Think about the hospitals that are stretched, the, concentrating on COVID. Yes. And shying away from heart attacks and strokes, for example. Like, those are the immediate ones, right? Let's be honest. Like, I've heard stories. They're anecdotal. So I don't know. But getting immediate care for like you said that acute condition that's a heart attack yes that's a stroke that's yes. an annual what you went through yeah what you went through could have it could have been worse on your treatment or your recovery because of delays because of the the people were stretched thin at the hospital to address you every five minutes they could only see you every seven or yes who knows I right absolutely see your point. point yeah one thing that I, I I thought of that I didn't I didn't see any mention of it I didn't see any articles about it I didn't Google I didn't beer Google it specifically but one thing I thought of and it, it, to me it has to be a valid point and maybe check mark can check me here <laughs> um, we will we will uh, validate check mark will be the judge I will of this. validate your okay. your experimentation judge check mark the honorable judge check mark you're allowed to lie in here man no so but I, I I believe my point will be valid once I can articulate it correctly um hey now so the 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 doctors and nurses and and the orderlies and all the people that work in the medical profession in 2020 how emotionally physically spiritually drained are they how who's taking care of them 
some of those people don't even go home to their families because they're scared of their families getting sick. So uh, I pictured, I was reading and doing research for, for today and I thought, okay, if I was an RN and I'm taking care of these people because that's my job and that's what I did. At a certain point, what would, would I think this, I can't do this anymore. Would I, would I, how many medical professionals would reach a breaking point mentally or emotionally and go, I can't do this anymore. It's, I just, I, I really, really want to help people, but I'm done. This is too much. This is just, I can't, I, I, I love my job. I love being a professional. I love helping people, but I am at the end of my rope. If I don't walk away from the hospital right now, I'm going to have a mental breakdown. How many nurses and doctors are at that point? How many have quit because of this? That's a long question. I'm sorry. The answer is all of them, but the question is when for each, right? Right. Because some people have different testicular fortitude. Well, and when I, I hope say the that, ladies don't I have say that. that as a joke. I know I had to. <laughs> I was just going to say, because I'm like, we always talk about testicular fortitude because between men, but no, we never talk about that fortitude yes. and everyone has intestines regardless of how you're assigned at birth. Um, but the truth is, yes, all of them will break at some point, right? Just when it might, it might be in 25 years. It might. Well, it might be in a month or two. Like how much longer can you hold on? It, Correct. An analogy I make is your, your, your star quarterback goes out of the game, Right. Now you're everyone knows that your backup's in. That first game or that the end of that game, they might there might be a tick up because everybody knows they have to step up their game because their their, oh, yeah. their leader's gone. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, like their main yeah. guy. Aaron Rodgers. Right. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers goes down. Like everybody knows they have to step up their game. And they do. There's like an increase in, in effectiveness, right? Yes, or correct. Eff effic efficacy? Efficacy. Sure. Uh, and performance, right? But then where's the time when it when it when it catches up to you yeah right and that's the question that's a good analogy uh, i know i know of one uh one nurse who generally people were uh i know a lot of nurses but i know a lot of them work like three twelves yeah to make 36 hours but they get paid 40 hour shift so they but so they play they work three twelves a, a, a week and they have four days off yeah i now understand that they are working 14 16 18 20 hour shifts and probably and overtime. So obviously they're not play, working just the three days. They're going into four or five. Yeah, that was six. my next question. Um, and the Who's person I know is that? pretty. The person I know is pretty. Um, just can handle stuff. Just seems like a person that can handle who, stuff. Who pays for that insurance? Who pays for the nurses who, working? Who pays? So that the nurse overtime? Is, that nurse is no longer working forty hours. That nurse is working. 80 to 100 right at at a super high rate plus time and a half yeah right the the, the hospital pays that right, and that hospital bills the insurance of those people well, that are there yes but i don't know how those rates work because yeah, exactly if the you could you could just say the hospital is not running efficiently enough to not pay overtime right because basically for every overtime you're paying another half a person Right. It's time and a half. Yes. Yes. Because my understanding, most nurses are on hourly because of that. Right. So they can do so they can grow over time because it's that profession is, I don't daunting. I don't I don't know another way for it. Oh, it's, yeah. It's such That's an why I brought it up. Yeah. Because they're I think that I, I was going to say they're suffering, too. But yes, I mean. I, it's truth. They're being they're maybe actually being used. Maybe that's not the right word. No, but they're being used by everyone right now. And and borderline abused, but not intentionally. Yeah. We're not doing this on purpose. It's no it's what it's the atmosphere right now. This the the COVID thing, man. It's pretty contagious. Literally. Okay. Anything else on that? Well, there's a lot of things that'll come up. Okay. I'm sure we won't go on a single tangent during this conversation. No, none are allowed, dude. I'm here to follow you, sir. No, I'm okay. I'm in control of the radio and the map, but you're driving. Uh, okay. Get in, buckle up, shut up, and hold on. Fuck yeah. Vamanos. Man. Okay, so on to the main subject, bitches. Mental health. So that's the original reason why I wanted to do this subject is because we all talk about the medical long-term side effects of COVID. If you get 
COVID, okay, you're okay. You might have a lung issue. You may have mental, like, uh, I don't think as clearly as I used to all these medical physical issues. Well, what are the non, what are the issues that you can't see from COVID? If you don't get COVID, that's what I was thinking. So I, I read a lot about it. I made a bunch of notes and, um, oh. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Are we going to do like topic for topic? If I may, when I, what I mean by that is like how it affects social. Yes. How? To, okay, cool. I, as long as we've got those, I can. I, I have a bunch of bullets. Cool. That's and, what I mean. Uh, a we bunch need of, bullets. Um, I mean, no. We I have need, bullet points. And, uh, we need ammunition, as, people. Yeah. I'm a pacifist, bro. So a bunch of bullet points as well as some psychological studies from doctors from the UK as well as some of my own notes I'd like to start off with uh, children schooling obviously kids are this year uh, the end of the spring semester and the beginning of the fall semester kids were sent home and then in the fall some were allowed to go back I mean depending upon the school district depending upon the college depending upon the high school depending upon the junior high the grade school oh hey I want my child to go in and depending upon how old they are and where you live, that six-year-old might have to wear a mask. Yeah. Oh, no, I want my child to stay home. And those things are up to the schools, and those things are up to the parents. So, And I'm not involved with, with, the, with the school system, but I'm just trying to think, okay, if what is, what is the effects of this year on a six- or seven-year-old? Oh, hey, and this, now this seven-year-old is 50. Hey, you remember when, remember when, remember when we were kids and we had to wear masks and on the playground, remember when, you know, we had to, we had to do homeschooling on the iPad. And obviously that 43 years later, the iPad is ancient, ancient, ancient technology. But what is this doing to the development of children and young people? The, the inter, the lack of interpersonal relationships. And I know that's a big deal with a lot of parents who are like, I'm willing to send my children to school because their emotional development is being stunted because they're not having interaction with their friends. They're not having recess. They're stuck at home on an iPad or PC or whatever the hell de device they're using to do their school. Zoom, right? Yeah. They're dependent upon electronics. How does that shape the, a young mind? I have a couple things on that. Go uh, just to maybe add another point of bullets. Yes. Um, what about the teaching profession being forced? Right. See, I the second you said anything about the parents caring about their stunted development, you know I'm a nihilist in like in a weird way. I don't feel like I'm not here to burn it down. We're here to address real systems and issues. But I read through bullshit when I see it. Parents want babysitters for their kids so they can do their fucking job and do their thing. Like school is a great babysitter for how many hours a day? Seven, seven, eight. I'm just, that's just my personal opinion. I don't have children. I'm a little jaded when it comes to that whole situation, but I, parents, you know, parents want to have it all nowadays. It's a little, I feel like parents want to have it all nowadays more than they used to, right? Like not committed to that part of the world, right? So it's easy to pawn them off on, on school. Just yeah. my opinion. I, I, I see your point. I'm not saying I, I, I'm not here to hurt anyone's feelings, but I'm allowed to have that opinion. And it's my opinion that a lot of clamoring that I heard, and I have personal direct relationships with people who are teachers, you know, is like, almost like, we need our kids back. And it's like, well, why? Well, I need my time back in a weird way when it comes all said and done, you know? Just, just saying. An interesting point a friend of mine has made several times in the past few months during several of our long and winding conversations that the younger generations, me being in my forties, the younger generations are, this is an observation um, that I've heard right or wrong or indifferent that obviously we live in a different world now because of electronics. We have, excuse me, we have, Social media, another term I hate. We have every every ten year old has a phone. You hate the concept, actually, not the well, term. Well, I mean, <laughs> you hate that it's there. It's like one of those things, right? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. So let's just say I don't want to. 
I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Uh, people under a certain age are are so focused on devices and gaming for not not a lot of. Ugh. I can't talk today, bro. I'm no, not even. No, I haven't had a drink fine. in a week. Maybe that's what the problem is. That's a problem. My dad used to say, "See what happens when you're sober." Yeah, <sighs> look, the more you drink, the better I sound. That's what I'm talking about. Oh wait, so that's not the, what the dependency I was to upon electronic devices, the dependency upon social media, on on the younger generations. So, say people under the age of 35 that are they there's less marriages there's less people getting their driver's license there's less people having kids because the world is shifting to oh you said it on the last podcast a less paper world you and i like paper and pen in a more digital world yeah. and that's gonna continue i imagine it's gonna continue so more connection without being connected right so if you have somebody at the age let's just say 30 and that person loves Whatever the new gaming system is, PS whatever, PS it's nineteen five now, and they're PS, giving them out of Burger Kings. PS six at it's the a Burger five, King, five, bro, five, five dot six, out. whatever it takes, and you're playing whatever game, and obviously it's addictive. That's why I don't play. In my yeah. opinion, it's addictive. I I I didn't read a study about uh, that. Do you, we might do a not conscious on the addiction of video. Actually, that's a great. Can can you put it? Can you jot that down? No, because I'm in the middle of a sentence. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll jot that down. Because that real quick. That one actually is a huge one because um, they are addictive. Huge. Put down the soundboard. Huge. Uh, huge. <laughs> where's Jessica? It was the best. Most the best, amazing. Most amazing. Huge uh, podcast. Huge documentary ever. <laughs> we don't do it as well what still, was I Jess. talking about? Okay. So the, the younger generation the younger is, is, is shifting and it's, it's become, if you, it's almost like the generation is becoming one, more hunched over. And they don't walk up. They don't walk upright anymore because they're hunched over looking at their phones. Is that a horrible thing to say? I, I, I feel bad saying that. Do you, but do you see my point? It's hard. It's to yes, no question. It's hard to look at someone oh in the God, eye, dude, and shake their hand and give them the courtesy like we grew up with. If you're looking down at your phone. Okay. So you see, you, you see my point. You see what I'm yes. saying. Okay. You make okay. a great, okay. You make an excellent point. What we're saying is communication has changed very drastically from even like us. So we're they, 10 years older than the, than what a technical millennial is. So yes is the answer. Why can't okay. we have a conversation about because it? Because I asked you, yes, no question. So the, the double, my point is, oh, bro. Bro, everything's nuanced, man. There I don't even no like yes what the hell's no's. nuanced. You put that on bread? Oh, it's, it's uh the it's it's a blooming onion. It's hey, got layers. Nice. So everything I just said in the past seven minutes, it's a double whammy based if you add it with what's going on right now. Okay, a ten year old is already addicted to their phone or their iPad or their game system or whatever electronic device they have. Even though their parents take it away from them for a day or a couple hours, hey, go outside and play baseball. Hey, go do this. What 80% of them, not all of them, right? Okay, it's not a blanket statement. Then you throw 2020 at a 10 year old, they're, already, they're separating from their friends. They're staying at home because of COVID. They're doing online schooling. You've got a double whammy. Yeah. So I imagine that, that the psychological effects on a young person would be monstrous. Even less people driving, less people having kids, less people dating, having relationships, getting married. It's like what was already starting is going to get doubly worse. Or meaningful relationships, I think. Well, I feel like, I, right? yes, Cause, cause, even friendships, well, not just not romantically, but good friends. Like, right. I don't even have any friends because I'm at home playing games all the time. Right. To your point. Isolation. To your point, we we are staying more more inside than we used to go out and play together because because we were a generation was told that it's dangerous to play outside or if you do play outside you need to be hermetically sealed with helmets and pads and in like a bubble wrap correct like, and it's almost like counterproductive in that way because you can't learn and you can't learn and fall down and scrape your knee and realize oh maybe next time i'll find a different way to do or that i'll be okay if i do right, skin my knee right like or, i did and and make it like a learning yeah. thing versus like a don't ever happen don't ever make mistakes like because when you do mistakes you don't even you don't know how to correct them because you never made them right correct. for example so you're inside all the time already now you're forced additionally the one time you do have time to be social is at school 
and, and now, now that's taken away from correct. you. Correct. So now you are a completely, you are a social animal growing in that specific age, you know, up until yes. you're probably, I mean, we're always growing, but I think brain cells continue until about 35. Sure. So you only have a, a not like a 30, like half, less than half of your life to experience the most out of it in a way. You know, not saying that as you get older, it's worse, but but I'm saying like for your brain development, and everything. Yes. Like genetically, right? Yes. Or, or just physiologically. Now you're taking all these away. Kids are social. Well, they have to connect. So now that puts them even more onto social media. Correct. Longer into video games. Correct. They do not know reality. Like they do. They as in all like we are People. not understanding what reality is anymore. And when we see a tweet that reads X, Y, Z is doing this. That's your reality because there's no way to vet the fucking thing. Yeah. Right. There's no there's because it's either pushing one agenda. We talked about social social dilemma and stuff on a previous podcast, um, but we don't know how it's going to how that's going to work. The, lo the long-term effects, we won't know this for decades. I know I say that word for, too frequently. I mean, we're going to see upticks. Well, socialists talk suicides. R rates have increased. Clearly, yeah, I did see that increased. as well. So just socially. Right but I'm along, talking about. Amongst that age group, amongst younger people, suicide rates. Do uh, you mean just specifically in 2020? Yes. Okay. Co COVID pandemic suicide rates have shown an uptick. I don't have the exact numbers, but I do. I have read that it that it has gone. We, up. You can post that. Uh, yeah, I tried looking up specific rates. I think they're afraid to share rates exactly because I I don't think they like to give out numbers on how many people kill themselves. It seems like a weird one that they always avoid. But you saw me trying to I did to Google it, and I I couldn't find anything with an actual rate. Number, okay, don't worry about it. You know, but I mean, obviously, we have some time to get the data. Or yeah, data. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, well, both. Um, I thought I thought one's supposed to say data and the other just supposed to say data. Why, I can't, why did I, you say both? I, I can't. I can't do both. Both of them. Both no. of them. That is un not approved. Caribbean, Caribbean. I get. Do I have one demerit? <sighs> you get it. You get a quarter demerit. Quarter demerit. <laughs> Point two five demerit. Anyway. All right. So, so continue with your social portion. Or, or I was already concerned of. about the fact that. The younger generation is becoming less physical, as you pointed out a couple of weeks ago, and more digital and less, you know, interactive, right? And less look you in the eye and less shake your hand. Right. And that's, I, I think that, that the interaction, the physical interaction is necessary for, like, I'm a hugger, dude. I, I don't, I hug everybody. That's just me. People like, they're like, dude, I'm like, sorry, man. I, 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 people that are friends of mine, I'm a hugger. Sorry. If, and if you, if you want to decline a hug, that's cool. I respect that. But every time I see you, hugs, bro. <laughs> when you're in front of me, you're actually a human being. That, exactly. That's all it is. Exactly. I mean, that's so all, you're on a screen, you're an avatar. You're not a person. Have yeah. you seen some of the fucking writing? Yeah. Have you seen my text? <laughs> uh, so the, to the, like the Martha McSally's and the Lindsay Robinson's like, <laughs> fuck off oh, like man. those like, no, it's a lot easier to do that when they send you something on a screen and you, you can respond with all guns blazing because you're not looking them in the eye. True. Because, you know, when you look them in the eye, you'd probably be like, hey, Lindsay, why you text me at midnight? Can we, can we not do that? You know what I mean? You, you, your approach is much different. Would it not be? Yes, I would agree. So this interaction, when we remember our courtesy respect no, uh, conversation, blocked it out. I I know you forgot it, but I think that one's very apropos to exactly what what's happening in general, right? People on the screen aren't humans, but every human is that, right? Like we all are, but they don't see us that. We don't see each other that way because we don't have to. There's no need, so we can treat each other with, like, not even lack of courtesy, but like going out of your way to disrespect or dishonor or discourage. You know what I mean? Like, yes. What was that thing this week? I got tweeted a nerd and didn't have friends in high school. Like, and 
And I just Who laughed cares? at that, right? No, I know. But no, that's I mean, the point. I'm saying, like, no, so, I'm not saying from your point of view, from right, her point of view. Right, from like, this story. Like, who gives a shit if you didn't, like, what difference does it make? You didn't have any friends in high school. Right. Who, yeah. Fuck, who cares? And then, like, you have an Android shut up. Um, okay, like, it's, to me, that doesn't hurt. But to some people, some people are yes, more sensitive. Okay? Of course. In Look, we're a little thicker skin. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm pretty, <laughs> I don't even, do I have anything but skin? It's all, it's all it's skin. It's like lizards. You're a V, bro. It's like, slack me some skin, man. Um, but um, that person was able to tell me to shut up and call me a nerd and a loser and say I didn't have any friends because they don't see me as a human being trying to make connections like we are on the podcast. They, they don't see that. And that's okay. That's not their, their fault. It's the effect of what's happening, right? It's like the, it's or, the no, outcome. But a year ago, would that person have acted the same way? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, it's ramped up only because we're further and further away from human contact. So there is an ex, there's a growth, right? It's, it's going upward. It's trending upward because we're physically interacting less every, you know, year over year, right? So as that goes down, this will still ramp up. But people are ruthless on that thing. You've seen it. Yeah, okay. So it's dumb. Yeah. Again, I don't, yeah. social media is dumb. Okay, wait. All ah! we're saying is they're not They don't see us as humans I know, on, the dude. Other, on the other side of the screen. Everybody knows that. Stay on target. How do they, not, how do they know that? Because if they knew that, they I'm, wouldn't, they wouldn't do, be like that, I don't think. People equal shit, bro. Right, I know. I just don't, don't think everybody knows that. That's why I they don't say like slip three times. Well, like bill juice. <laughs> so the question is, check mark. It's all Jew. The question Thank is, you. given the fact that younger generations were already on the road that they were on, and now they've also been given twenty twenty COVID. How? What do you see the long term side effects for people under the age of thirty five? That's the question. I believe that. COVID accelerated this kind of phenomenon. Okay. But the truth is, um, yeah, so COVID accelerated this. It exacerbated it. It even made it more con concentrated. Yeah. But it's my opinion that we've been moving that direction since this social media thing got out of hand. Ex uh, of, I, I agree, but that's not the question. The so question is COVID exacerbated. Probably okay. doubled, so doubled the rate now. And then now we're like at a point, maybe we, can't, maybe we can't reel it back now. Well, of course maybe not. Back, maybe we were able to do it before, but it feels like we can't reel it back anymore. It is out of the box. Okay, so a 10-year-old that was given, okay, a 12-year-old that was a 12-year-old a in 2020 in sixth grade that was given a phone two years ago at the age of 10, uh, let's say an iPhone 7, okay, 8, like a couple of years older model right and it can they can text their friends they can get on the internet they can they have a instagram account or no sorry they do snapchat and tiktok sorry the little little children's shit yeah okay so talk tick come on TikTok, man play our flop flip game all Thank the flop you. flips so the the question is that 12 year old what side effects are they going to see in when they become 40 when they're 40 how would their life be different if 2020 did not happen? I don't think it would. Really? I just, I just think they get to the, they get to it faster. They get to the, um, I'm very concerned about this whole thing. Yeah, me too. That's why I have, that's why I took all these notes. And, and not even, the, <laughs> but the, <laughs> No, the COVID thing aside, I'm very concerned about the other thing. I think that it, in 30 years, that person would be who they are. I just think they can get there in 15 now. Oh, be okay. Does that make sense? Like, that's yeah. what I'm saying. When I say exacerbate, it's almost like picking the scab. Now it's just, now it's just doubled the rate of it getting to where, to its nihilistic end. Okay. Of no one ever looking each other in the eye ever again. My, you know, if we get there. If that makes sense, we're never going to not have human interaction, but we've seen the trends. Yes. This just made it that much worse when you're forced to stay at home, basically forced. And even when you're out, you can only see an eye. You can't even see a facial expression because you're wearing a mask and you can't 
feed off social cues as easily. Like you can't tell if I'm smiling or not. Maybe me because I got the fat eyes, so I do that. But but most people <laughs> are like this. You don't have fat eyes. And they're like, why are you glaring at me? I'm like, oh, I was smiling. You couldn't tell because like this is covered, right? Because you were in a beak. <laughs> Anything else on children? Um, well, it's it's concerning. The guidelines they had for Gilbert, if I may, because I have a little bit of information. I watched the town meeting through did? through a second party. Yeah, oh, that's cool. But basically, children under five. Good aren't... thing I live there and I didn't watch it, and you don't live there, and you did watch it. Well, I have a teacher that works. there. Oh, you have a teacher. Um, I have I have that teacher a couple times a week. Oh you know? dear God, that's not what I you fucking don't... meant. Oh, I'm sorry. God, no, actually, I'm not sorry. No, I'm going to brag about that. That's a brag moment. Um, so she teaches. Can I go now? They say people under, uh, they said children under five were, did not have to wear masks. Okay. Which I found odd. I'm like, but doesn't also not spread. Like there's just misconfusion. A five-year-old won't be able, they're, uh, they're five. They're not going to be, they're not going to keep it on. Right. But neither is a six-year-old. I agree with, I'm on your team, dude. No, I know. I'm just saying neither is a six-year-old and the social distancing between children is a lot different than with adults. Like we're aware of it and we still don't do it. Right. Um, children are like all up in each other's boogers. You know what I'm <laughs> hey, what's your booger taste like? Oh, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Right, bro. Um, I never tasted your boogers. No, dude. we have not. There Nor is my no, own. <laughs> there was no booger. Exchange shit. booger exchange program. Do we have a booger exchange program? The BEP. <laughs> 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 we had a booger exchange program no, and we, they were delicious no we, no, did, um, not. we did not no God, i am it. saying we did not but the point being do we need a gavel um this the six-year-old with masks right well it's just being isolated even more than normal which is being more because of video games and social media is dangerous it's yes. dangerous to not interact with human beings when you're a child because you you learn how to act with human beings when you're a child. You don't learn it as an adult because to a good experience, this guy doesn't change his fucking spots and I'm pretty much locked into who I am. I can change my mind about things, but my delivery method is certainly douchey regardless. I agree with everything you just said, especially the douchey part. Is there anything on here that, that matters? Because I don't know what you... Th I like didn't to. have suicide mentioned at all. Okay, we're going to get off. surprised by that. Let's just transition off the off the children's topic. Well, it's still mental in children. I know, but okay. I'm talking I was talking about a 12-year-old. Got it. And the suicide rates, I'm assuming for people under the age of 12 are you Remember social dilemma was 12 was I, I know. I know. Okay, but we we were just talking about a 6-year-old in masks and now we go to suicide. So, let's make it clear that the children's topic has been closed. Well, I thought you were if, if I may, I thought you were talking about children and the effects. I think suicide is an effect of okay. the children. Okay, I didn't know that's what you meant. I that's apologize. That's kind of how, okay. right? Because su suicides seem to ramp up with isolation. Isolation. And children being isolated. That's all I was saying. That I was my okay. connection between I the two. I think, I thought, there, I'd like to be clear about that connection. I don't know if we, I did, I mean, of all the reading I did and the notes I took, which was, Kind of excessive this time around, but uh, we didn't, I didn't, I didn't make one note about suicide, but I, I think that's a great point and I'm glad you brought it up because obviously that's a real problem. How, however, I don't know if we are going to know the, the true effects of the suicide rates due to COVID for years, may right? I, may I give you where my brain went with it? Sure. In Social Dilemma, already, from social media, suicide rates increased like 150% and 170% among young people under 17, correct? Yes, correct. Now, all all I'm saying is, now you're on social media more. It's going to go up. I, 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 yes, the ABC. I told, right, That's yes, all it is. Direct correlation. Right, that's I all totally, I'm saying. Totally, yes, sir. Totally valid point. Right. I. And I sadly I agree with you. And that's fucking. It's horrible. unfortunate, it's horrible, but just the man. more the more we're exposed to that toxicity, the higher the likelihood of it happening. I mean, that's just a fact. That's not we're not trying to, you know, beat a dead horse. No, but that's a direct Shh. correlation between <sighs> you. You have a rate that's gone up already because of this thing. Now you're on this thing more. The rate's going to increase. Correct. 
and more and more people are going to get on it. Right. And longer. That's and get, really going to be on it more. Right. Absolutely. So right. it's just with the isolation, you're, 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 it's just longer. a toilet bowl. Just yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's out of the box. It is. It's just my opinion. But let's go to our we've children recovered. We. I we think can, they're, gonna, we, if, they're the most affected by this besides losing your job and money, like the things that, you know what I mean? Your development as a child, correct. Can be very drastic, especially, and it could be like between five and seven, it could affect five to seven year olds way more than like even three to four year olds or 10, you know, 10 to 12 year olds, right? Yeah. There could be groups of chunks of ages that it affects more because that part of the brain development needed that part that's missing from what yes, COVID created. Yes, and I I would really think under the age of four, they're not going to remember this, right? Possibly, but remember, we've talked about how the subconscious starts at two. Yes. And that's where, where all the stuff starts to happen. Two to seven is your biggest growth because you go from birth at 20%, 20-some percent yeah. brain development to 100% at seven. Yes, of course. <laughs> 100% at seven. Um and in between that, that's when your learning happens. That's where your operating system gets created. I, I, absolutely. And I also th- imagine that, let's say you're, let's say you turn four in March of 2020, COVID hits the day after your birthday, and your parents slowly over the first weeks of March and April, your parents turn into germaphobes because they're watching the news and they buy hand sanitizer and they're just like everyone else and they get toilet paper and, and they, and they are, they're washing their hands for 20 seconds and they start wearing masks and they, they're locked down. And then that, that's gonna, yeah, you're four and yeah, when you're 40, you're not going to remember being four. You'll you'll remember little, little snippets, right? But that does shape your development. Yeah. You're like, fuck my parents are germaphobes. God damn it. They weren't, in February, they were not. In March, they were. Holy crap. Do you think children have higher, like, we talk about psychic abilities and these other things. Do you think they have a higher intuition younger? Of course. Okay. So, just on that face alone, they feel that fear yes. in their parents for all that yeah. time. Too. Like, we haven't even talked about that. My opinion is children see everything. That's how they see that thing around me, whatever it is, whenever I go up to a crying baby Your and aura. it just stops and just stares at me like, like, I don't, like I'm glowing, right? Like just something mesmerizing. I can't explain it, but they can see it. And we're taught as we get older to unsee those things. Imagine those feelings. Like you and I, since this whole week, this we've been sick to our stomachs. I've had heart palpitations. I felt like I was had to go to the hospital. My left arm get, went numb, he, constant headache. And I'm sitting here, I don't even have that. Children are open to all that. Imagine they can't even protect themselves from that, that fear of six months of what their parents are experiencing. They don't even and know what's going on. They don't even know they're doing it. And right. it's not anyone's fault. Right. They don't even know. But the parents can't help from being afraid because they're afraid for them. They're afraid for their children. They're afraid for the future. They're fearful. And that child picks all that fear up and it just, it just grows. It's my opinion. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And that's, if that really sucks. And I hadn't thought about that at all. The majority of my notes were not about kids at all. <laughs> well, I think we've I think we've uh, beaten the child horse to death. Let's that's not good, dude. Welcome to the Hotel California. What the fuck? That's How the how is that? Is that the age group? That one's sir? interesting. I no, I think it's rate. I think it's out of a thousand? I don't know how many it is, but I, yeah, I think it's we're looking out of at the thousand. suicide facts and figures United States for twenty twenty, which I find interesting because it's twenty twenty is not over yet, so I don't know how this it's can be. It's not percent; it's out of a thousand. It's current. Oh, it's up. I think it's just a certain for, date. I'm sure it's up to whatever the CDC two thousand. Oh, this might be two thousand eighteen. But then why does it say twenty twenty top? That's fucking uh, dumb. I think it's yeah. I don't know. This is all. Okay. This is all two thousand eighteen. You can post so that. Whatever. But move matter. along. But the point. Of the matter is children are now dead to us. That's not, don't, <laughs> no, dude. I'm sorry, that was That's not. They're lovely little creatures, I, man. You they're and the I, innocent, dude, and that, that they're the most important ones, dude. You, 
you and I them and the dogs are the most important ones. Well, not the dogs, but you and oh, I have you. said that the children are absolutely. You and I have, are on a mission Dude. to if we can help a child, we'll help a child because they're the future, and Dude. I believe that the children are the future. If you teach them well, let them lead the way. We will let them lead them. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to do that. I can't believe awesome. you stole that shit. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> no, you're not. You knew. We knew we were both going there. We're a jinx. We're basically, we should call our show Jinx. We should. Jinx, you owe me a Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, children, done. Okay. Moving on to the main part of the podcast. Good thing we're, yeah. So anyway, How is that non- That's a big no, part. No, I know. I'm just kidding. So the... Uh, the the issues with mental illness and I'm just kidding main part of the podcast the 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 psychological issues mental issues regarding adults and long term effects of of COVID um, according to the World Health Organization psychological and behavioral disorders anxiety depression PTSD post traumatic stress disorder and sleep disturbance are all possible long term side effects of the fact that not not having COVID, but of the fact that somebody lived through this year, having to wear a mask, having being locked down at home, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's according to the WHO. It's not, not the band from Britain, the World Health Organization. Do you have anything to add to that? I do. Please, sir. May I ask two questions? You may ask seven. When do I not have something to say about something? That's your first question. Right, that's Never. my question. Okay. Second question. Therefore, no, that's all I needed. That's okay. why I had, I had to ask two questions because the first one is the question asking if I could ask a question. True. You said seven. I don't. I only needed two. Seven, seven, seven. seven Nineteen. No, 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 nineteen. Seven is, okay. Um, yes, so to this end. Yes, sir. Solitary confinement was a large punishment yeah. that was used amongst prisoners. It has been found to create psychological breaks. It's the absolute worst thing to have an individual of any kind sit with their own thoughts. I like my thoughts. Until you don't. Um, well, until you, usually I until sit until with you Jim eat a Beam bullet. Usually, usually I sit with Jack Daniels and my thoughts. So. Until you eat a bullet, yeah, you right. don't, you're fine with your thoughts until they consume you. Um, it, isolation can create schisms, actual oh, breaks in the brain. It's a great song. It it's a great everything. It's just a cool. How do you spell it? It's got an H in it. S C. It's schisms. schisms. I don't want no hawking on my bread. Schisms. It, um, so that's how it works. Uh, so the more isolated humans are, imagine being. We're forty something ish. We are social creatures. We go out with our friends. We meet people. We say hello, and then that's just ripped away from us. Yes. And we don't, we're not on the social media as much. We might be on the book face, but we're definitely not on, we're definitely not on the twits, but you're looking at this and trying to engage, but like it's, we know it's fake, right? Cause we know what real interaction is. So even, even on a screen, yeah. FaceTime is an awesome thing, right? Oh my God. I see my grandchildren. Yeah. It's real. It yeah. is awesome. Yeah. But to you and I, we still know underneath it all. It's fake. It's not touching them. Some people still love reading books because the, they, the tactile feel of the page as it's turned, the sound, right? That, you know what I mean? Yes, like the, of course. The weight yeah, of the, I, I, I like books. I don't like right, reading the weight on my of the iPad. Book, yeah. Right. The weight of the book in your hand. The just smell, the library. Yeah, the smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these nostalgic things that we grew up. Remember, yeah. I'm, this isn't everyone. We're just speaking from our perspective. Correct. As middle-aged men. God, I mean, uh, middle aged white men, even on top of one it. and a half, bro. Middle aged, I can, there's a half brown guy in the room, bro. Presente, okay, yeah, but that's cool. But we're hetero sapiens, it's totally cool, though. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that meant. I was trying to make a bad joke, and I it was failed. funny as shit. I missed, I'm gonna be laughing so at that you. So, uh, you again. are you, of course, you jumped the shark and stole, you went down to uh. Yeah, it's good. No, it's it was a well, good. You trans- said adults. No, no. But the point about isolation, because yeah. of course, sixteen bullet points down. Okay, I'm kidding. The, I had I had a bullet well, point. Let's touch it. I, I'm gonna get. I'm, oh, there's a bullet point called isolations, according to the BBC. Chronic 
loneliness. Of course, you use the word loneliness, you prick. Chronic loneliness brought on by social isolation or, quote, lack of meaning in life during the pandemic is another major concern. Ba- that's basically, you just stole the blind from the BBC. And I didn't read a goddamn article. Right. <laughs> I feel like I wasted my time reading an no, article. No, no. What's funny is, once again, we address how, how you and I perceive the world. We have this, we're on a fucking motor that's running like... All the time. I didn't sleep for fucking a week now. Well. well pretty much. See, but so how is it that you didn't sleep for a week? I toss yet, and turn for But a week, this week. past week, I did not drink, which was a miracle. This past week, I slept great. The best I've slept in a long time, probably because I didn't drink. But yet I was exhausted. Because the... I imagine because the energy was total poop because of the election. That's the only thing that makes sense. You are exhausted from the energy of the election. My brain, though, processes why why is everyone doing what they're doing. So, like, I double it. Like, I put myself on an extra load because I actually consciously think about the things. Yeah, yeah, no, one, no know, once I'm I disturbed, I, I do it. You see how my, you see me yeah, and I I'm start, opposite. I start like vibrating. Yeah, you shut down. I'm like, I don't want to know, dude. You, this is fucking Megzi, dumb as shit. These people are fucking stupid. Please, please, I don't, I don't care. Like, please you know what I mean? understand. I don't want what I have. No, I, I yeah, I know. I would fucking give it up in a fucking heartbeat if I could just sit and cut. Megzi comes home and she goes, hey, can we just sit in peace? It's four it's like 428 and she goes can we just not have the tv on or anything sound for a ha- till five o'clock so we made a rule 5 p.m we don't have anything on so it's like quiet hour it's quiet it's quiet like half 45 minutes at most right quite a half hour something like that what five o'clock do you also not speak yes no no conversation just quiet she'll read a book whatever i fucking lose my mind why don't you, you just leave i because uh, I'm trying. No, hang on. Listen to me. Because I try. Why not? I, I want peace is my point. Why don't you go for a walk? Let me let me finish my thought. Why don't you go for a walk? Take your headphones. Listen to your favorite. Listen to that Bare Naked Ladies album that you love so much. You know what I mean? It's been one week since I sucked. I didn't say sing it. Oh. But when you go for a walk over there in the little park by your house, you know what I mean? Like, go... You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I, I'm just spitballing. You know what I'm saying? I love the idea. I'm trying to get in that world of peace and quiet is my point. And all the effort that I'm putting in and, and we everyone talks meditation and stuff and my mind goes crazier. I'm just talking about how I'm wired. I understand. Like, so the fatigue, in addition to tossing and turning, then I think about it. The good luck reeling that the fuck back in. It just doesn't happen for me. Would you like to read this, sir? Solitary confinement, according to the beer Googles, has been reported to cause hypertension, headaches, and migraines, profuse sweating. Isn't that the worst? Dizziness and it's called you and me. <laughs> heart palpitations. That's a great word. Many inmates also experience extreme weight loss due to digestion complications and abdominal pain. Many of these symptoms are due to the intense anxiety and sensory deprivation. Deprivation. Uh, I never read. I never read that. I just pulled that up, and holy fuck! I just realized that I, you and I have been clear that I like to be alone at work. Like, don't we talk like to, to be me on our own. Yeah, we like to be pretty much isolated. We do like that at work. Right? I love working from home, dude. Right. I can w- I, I work. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. No. Share. I, I mean, this year's been. I mean, I don't. There's yeah, this year sucked for a lot of reasons, but I love working from home. I get to sit home in my flip flops, and I can be with the dogs. And when it's not 119 degrees, there you have dogs. I have dogs. I can open. Well, you're not alone. Yeah, correct. But they snore and fart, and it's gross as shit. You're and, not. My point is alone. This oh, I, solitary I have to confinement. Share, I have I'm to sorry. share about that. This is why. I, okay. This is why I'm asking. If yeah. I, may. I also. Do not like to be bothered at work. I love being alone, right? I just, so I thought, because I just reading the second half of that, I'm going to read what part of it just resonated with me. Okay. okay? Yeah. Um, when, when we start working from home up here, greatest fucking thing ever. I don't have to deal with fucking people, right? Yeah. Extreme experience, extreme weight loss due to, to digestive complications and abdominal pain. You had that? 
That's all I have. I threw up last night in the middle of the night. I threw up in bed. I've had... Okay, wait a minute. I've had upset stomach. I felt queasy, and I've lost 10, 15 pounds. But did you have that when you started working from home? Like back in March, April? I wasn't feeling that way when I when I started, now that I'm looking back at it. I this... It literally is a light bulb right now. Okay, so in March and April, did you have those things or not? Nope. Okay. Well, I came back from Belize in the beginning of March, then went to Vegas the next week, and then COVID. Okay. I started working from home on like March 16th or something. Yeah, that's me too. Um, I'm just looking at that, just reading that part. I, I was 247 pounds two years ago, and you know I don't exercise, right? You, know, I, you I don't lost a bunch of weight before 2020. I had gotten down to about two, 220, probably. And now I'm at 207. To, to what? Uh, now you, got at 207. To, you got down to what? 220? 220? 220? 220? Oh, yeah, what? 220, 221? 221, whatever it took. Okay, just check. 45, 46, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> um, yeah, two, and now I'm 207. And... I'm queasy all the time and I thought it was just I had I'm hungry and I just refuse to eat because like I didn't have the emotional stuff I feel emotionally healthy healthy. Yeah, but now I'm reading this and now I'm actually kind of scared Like I know that sounds weird, but extreme weight loss due to digestion complication abdominal pain Megs Megzi Has been living this for months. I wow. never I don't even Holy throw up shit. or anything I've thrown up now a handful of times in the last three okay. two months hang on now that I think about it. Okay. It's weird. Okay, let's let me let me let's back up one second. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's okay. All good. No, 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 no. This is this is really I, I think this is really, really a good topic. Okay, let me repeat this. Hypertension, headaches, migraines, profuse sweating, dizziness, heart palpitations, weight loss due to digestion complications, abdominal pain due to intense anxiety, sensory deprivation. So to all of our listeners. Please leave a comment on on Twitter or uh, Podbean or whatever the fuck. Did anybody else have this kind of stuff? Because that's we'll super, post it. Yeah, too. this that's very interesting because I wasn't aware of. Yes, I mean I know solitary confinement in a prison is super bad because of mental aspects, right? But I wasn't aware of the physical ramifications. So I I would be really I no. In all seriousness, I'm very curious if. Other people had, yeah, man, I, I, I was getting dizzy during July. Yeah, Chris, this, this or that happened. Because that's, man, that's, that's fucked up. I didn't. I've wow. had all of that, by the way, too. Heart palpitations, dizziness, all of it. I've, I've experienced all of that the last six Profuse months. To, to a stronger extent. Now, to that end, it could be everyone else feeling that way and me picking it up. Right. Just as easily as it is me. But I'm going to, let's go with science right now and say it's me because we can prove that I felt that. Man. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. We're good with that. No, I'm not. I'm What's fucking that? disturbed as shit. I know. And this is, this is when we talk cruel and unusual punishment, we probably should talk about the penal system at some point. <laughs> the, you said penal. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to remind everyone that I am a seven-year-old mm-hmm. with this a mortgage and a job many. and I'm this I, many a bald seven-year-old. How's it going? Um, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Lastly, on the isolation front, is what I put down was how isolation affects the mind, more specifically the elderly, because. Uh, I moved my mom from California to Arizona in July. And when I was at her assisted living place in California, I was talking through my mask against my protest uh, with a few of the people that worked at her very nice assisted living place in California about how the lockdown, you know, from from March to July had affected the the people that were living there and there's like you know, 200 residents or something like that and they hadn't had any covid cases uh it, it was very safe environment nice little place it was a little older but it was nice and they said how the the lockdown you know people the 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 residents had to stay in the rooms they could not go to the cafeteria they were served their meals in the room they could not go like church was canceled the you know bingo was canceled all the events were canceled they were in their rooms for months 
because of the CDC. So they advised me that the, 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 the residents, you could tell mentally how that affected them. They could no longer see their grandkids. They could no longer see their kids. They could no longer see their ministers and their priests and their rabbis. They could, it, they had a couple of people that declined very, very rapidly in two, three months. And they did have a couple of people pass away just because they were just, they had no human interaction except for the people that brought their meals and brought their meds. That was it. They did do Skype FaceTimes with their family members. That's, but you know, that's not like hugging your granddaughter or your grandson. So to, to people our age and older. Yeah. We, we know this is great technology, but it is a fabrication. It's not, the genuine touch of a hand. I feel that we're losing our sight of that with young, with the newer generations who aren't experienced to that as much. Yes, sir. It was really, I didn't really think about it. And when I was chatting with those people, it was a real eye, eye opener. How, you know, you, you, let's just say this, an 85 year old gentleman living across the hall from my mom, what does that, what does that do to him that, you know, his wife passed away five years earlier and, you know, his grandkids live 30 minutes away and his kids live 30 minutes away. So how he, he doesn't see them every Saturday anymore. He doesn't get to, he doesn't get to go to the Dodger game with them anymore. There are no Dodger games there. Are, it, 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 and then when they started, there's no fans. So the whole, the entire system the entire culture that that guy is used to is gone. Yeah, his life is not. It's changed. It's it's like he's he's not existent because it's not like anyone can interact with him. I mean, they can via technology. Yeah, but no other real way to interact with him. Yeah. So, my, and my mom just has her knitting, which she's a psycho knitter, and does these super complex psycho knitter, psycho knitter this Saturday on TBS. Psycho knitter, psycho knitter on coming TV. this fall. So, in amazing. fact, I've had friends tell me, man, your mom's shawl that she oh gave my me gosh, is those, so intricate. That's like letters that it starts with letters that doesn't sound like psycho knitter PK. What? Why, the, why the fuck is psycho knitter PK? Oh, Puck shit. Knitter. It starts with a P and a K. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, PK coming to fall. I'm like, what's that stand for? Oh, psycho knitter. Yeah. So all she has <laughs> is her knitting and the TV. Silent. It's, she's the silent psycho knitter. She's the silent K. She'll sneak up on you with her walker Silent. and her knitting needles. Watch out. So it's, and obviously it's affected her mentally too. And I've seen that and it's really sad. Yeah. But that, that shows what the isolation can do to, to a child and to an, to an elderly person as well. And it's really shitty. And it's relative for an adult. And I say it's relative because some elderly are alone. Their True. children, they didn't have children or True. their children aren't, aren't, aren't with them either. They went early, you know what I mean? Or, yeah, yeah. or they didn't want anything to do with them. They just threw them in a home. I, it could be a myriad reasons, right? Yes. Some of them, some of them, you know, the children, the children and the grandkids come every Sunday to your point. Yes. And they're all, they spend three hours with grandma and grandmama and Nana and, and Booby. And what would you say? Peepa or something? Meemaw. 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 That would go. be uh, Shel Sheldon. Oh yeah. Right. Shelly. Uh, Shelly. Dr. Shelly. Yes, yeah, Shelly. Uh, Meemaw's house, right? Or, you know, great Meemaw. Um, and they go there and they're like, we always love this time with grandma. Now we can't have that. Right. They lose. That's a loss. And then there's some, you know, where they still live with the families. So, and now they have to be separated almost because of the dangers to the adults, right? Or to the elderly. Yes. So, like, in Italy, for example, it's like three generations oh, living yeah. in the same house. Like, look yeah. how quickly that spread in general. But that all said, like, they are relative. But for the people that are completely isolated already, obviously no effect, right? They've already been, they, they're they suffering, first of all. I'm not saying it's okay to be like that but they are suffering but they've suffered the whole time because they never had the loss of isolation or the la the lack of isolation they've always they got tossed in a corner of some well, elderly home but the other ones are the other ones are affected the ones that do have social contact and the and that liveliness right yes you know i, I mean how many jeopardy shows can you watch to keep your mind sharp like there's there's something about conversation like what we have for hours on end 
sorry to the world uh <laughs> for hours on end um you know what i mean that where we sit here and we work shit out as we're talking and these are like mental exercises and without that i know my brain would atrophy and it would just it's like shrivel up and go out like that earwig thing from star trek from con oh, so sick dude from con was chick so gross just saying gross what are your thoughts i i think it it's really when when that when they told me that in california it was really sad and i i I, I, and I didn't think about it. I never realized the effect that human interact, the profound effect that human interaction has, but it makes perfect sense. We're social. Yeah, it, exactly. It makes perfect sense that we all need that, you know? It's funny because we can't get away from it, you and I. So we feel like we don't need that, right? Like it's it's because of the way we feel, the way we experience the world and the way we perceive the world. We get it when we don't want it. Like, we almost get too much of it, right? Yeah. Because we feel it. So we assume that because we feel that way, everyone else feels that way. And wow. it's literally a 180. Correct. It's exactly a 180 Correct. of yes, how you and I feel. You and I are like, can I? Can you find me a cold, dark, damp place? I could just be, a, just, can I just shut it the fuck off for a minute? Can I just shut it off? And some, most people are like, can I get more of that? It just it's odd because they don't get it the way we get it, I think. Understood. So uh the last point is O C D. Obsessive compulsive disorder. I need help with this one. Sure. This is I, I, I didn't think about this and I found it very interesting. Social anxiety and germophobia. As an okay, germophobia as a type of OCD. Got it. Yes. So that's much more specific. Uh, a, a couple of articles I read. A, a lady was uh, again on on the, uh, the another BBC article that I went down a rabbit hole. She was so over the top OCD about germophobia due to COVID. She would not take tr public transfer. Public transportation, excuse me, and the, she was more concerned about the cleanliness of cutlery and drinking glasses. So she wouldn't. She just she self quarantined herself a month before it it became mandatory in the UK. Please allow myself to introduce myself. Correct. Uh, Stephen Taylor, author of Psychology of Pandemics and professor in psychiatry at the University of British Columbia, argues that for an unfortunate minority of people, perhaps 10 to 15 percent, life will not return to normal. I'm sorry, can you say that again? This smart guy said for an unfortunate for an unfortunate minority of people, perhaps 10 to 15%, life will not return to normal. 10 to 15% does not sound small. This is specifically regarding OCD, germophobia, and a couple, and uh, I'll get to a couple other points, but uh, again, I'll, regarding that along those lines. That is between one out of 10 and one out of seven people. Yes, sir. Specifically. Uh, so let's say, in, let's, okay, hang on. So let's say, let's just do a little crazy. In two years, let's say in 18 months, there's a, a vaccine, okay? And everybody in the world gets it. Um, I'm not taking it. I, I, I know. Me neither. But let's just say uh, there's a vaccine. 99% of the population takes it around the world. COVID cases drop to next to nothing. What this person is saying is between 10 to 15% of people are going to be germaphobes because of COVID specifically. Yeah. That's in addition to the people that were already germaphobes. Yeah. That's. W would you like to know the exact number then just from the, from using 15%? Sure. A fucking boatload. 1.1%. Billion. billion yes sir that is a shit because that load. is one in seven right correct 1.1 1. 1 billion yeah. with a b yeah that's china will have ocd that's china yeah that's three times us 
Well, no, that no. What he said is life will not return to normal. Right. So that's a large spectrum of oh, uh, wait, okay. somebody like. I wash my hands one extra time a day to someone right. that's like, I can't even go out to eat because it's fuck. I, like there's somebody who it absorbs their life. Yeah, so there's extreme. a massive spectrum. There's a spectrum. However, not back to normal. We're just talking about one point. Correct. One, one billion people, who, three times the amount of people in the United States currently will not return to normal or may. Let's according may, to this doctor. Right. That's correct. That's may what not return to no that's their what normal. Life will not return to return to normal. I cannot one talk to billion this. people that's may not return to what they previously saw as normal. Because every to your point, normal is also a spectrum. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like normal is not well, normal or for everybody. Normal meaning so what they normal. are, what right. they were la a year ago right. in that's 2019. So one billion people will not be will, could possibly will not return, not return to, that. to what they were before. Regarding OCD and germophobia. And that's not even necessarily contracting it. That's just from the psychological effects of it. That's correct, sir. That's Completely ridiculous. mental, emotional correct. I'm trying to see something with COVID and OCD, but since germophobia is an OCD, I get it. That germophobia is like where it's at. Like people, MRSA scares the shit out of me in airports. They are uh, in, uh, in hospitals and they said... Something about the airline flying on a plane, like they didn't find pick up any of that stuff, and I'm like, it's recycled air. I, I, your filters can't be that good. It had to be expensive to make those changes. Like I can't imagine how they did. Do you know what I'm talking it's about? A good point. How expensive the the filters to to change all them out? Yeah, it's a very good because they said they upgraded those, and they said that the the military claims or the government lied uh, the, the claims are flying in a plane it's like impossible to contract it through that recycled air i saw system. that too and everyone gets sick on an airplane yeah, we were, we were like, i don't oh, understand how'd you get sick oh i flew in from yep. dallas <laughs> yep <laughs> three years ago you're like yep. oh i got a cold because i flew in from chicago i i, I i'm confused about that one I are totally, you a little confused yes, about that one i totally agree dude I don't, I don't wanna, understand that. It's a weird tangent. I'm not, it's not about just them lying. I just don't understand. No, but airplanes it. Help me understand in general. It. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. get it either because, in it's fact, when we, whenever I fly, I always feel short of breath. I never feel like I can take a deep breath. Yes, because it is at a higher altitude. Well, you're, yeah, you're actually oh, getting yeah. like eleven thousand foot. Oh, it altitude. is. Okay. Yeah, because they can't afford to pump. Okay. Sea level I, altitude at thirty five thousand okay. feet. It is pressurized. So it is pressurized, I get but it's all that. pressurized right. to like nine or okay. ten thousand. So feet. it is. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's almost like being up at flag, right? Seven thousand okay. feet or I higher. I did not but know that. You're not ex exercising on airplanes, so it doesn't. You don't really get short of breath. You're just sitting there. Uh, what do you mean? I do burpees on the plane. Oh, I I do too because I drink and I'm like. Burp. <clears throat> yeah, I, burpees are the <clears throat> devil, bro. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, yeah, psychological stuff. Back to the back uh, to the bullet points. Uh, obsessive points compulsive bullet. disorder could could be one of the main candidates, due to the fact that OCD arises from an interaction between genes and environmental factors, which I found interesting. Obviously, yeah. Well, they're talking nature versus nurture. You yeah. can be nurtured into being OCD. Trust me. I've well, yeah, it. but obviously, environmental factors is exactly what twenty twenty is, right? right? And genetically. So if you're already, well, my mom loves the the phrase predisposed. So if you're already predisposed in your genes to having OCD tendencies for whatever reason, yeah. then you throw this year at it. Yeah. You exacerbate. You it. may not have a chance, right? Yeah. yeah. You well, you definitely push it. You, you right. stress, yeah, you're stressing that portion of your body. Oh my God, I just stole my own. I just precogged myself, bro. Bro. You, you can't, I've never done that before. How do you precog yourself? Ooh, you, are you ready? Yeah. For people ready. with a genetic, for people with a genetic predisposition. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never done that before. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, I, I precogged my mom. For people with a genetic predisposition Just don't invite tom cruise towards some forms of ocd i.e contamination obsessions and cleaning compulsions the stress of covid19 is likely to trigger or worsen ocd uh yeah so just think about Think about those that. one billion people, as you said. Yes, just not returning to who they were before. Think That's about the stock price increase for the Purell company. <laughs> It's got to be ten percent of those billion, right? So that's a hundred million. God, damn, hundred million motherfuckers are buying more Purell. Well, let's let's talk about that. Which because part? Purell? That, yeah, let's do that right. I, I almost did it. Do it. I almost do it. did Just it. Do it. No, 
Hashtag Please. RQ. Hashtag RQ. Real Just quick. Hashtag RQ. Um, this is important. Using Purell, all, using using Purell all the time is actually, Not in my good. opinion, accelerating the bacteria's ability to fight it. That's why MRSA's and all this shit's happening because we're using it and we have zero immune system for when something comes in. Boom, we get hit hard. You know who the people are that that are least affected by COVID right now? Take a guess. The Marine Corps. No, the prisoners. Because their fucking immune system has been under attack for fu- since they've been in prison. Because they have no Purell? Well, they're on top of each other for tens of years, and they all contract the same illness, right? Their immune systems are out of this world. People are, they were spitting in cups and drinking it, trying to get COVID. <laughs> So they could get released because there was a COVID release program. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. I'm, I would. Mm, mm, okay. Move along. I can't. Eh, hold on. <sighs> okay. I just I just need some pretty music, but I'm not going to do it. Um, okay. Their their immune systems are so like it's like working out. Their immune system has been going to the gym. Every day. It's huge in Japan. So what we do is we Purell and put our kids in the bubble wrap like we were talking about before. Yeah. And they have zero, they have no ability to fight anything because they're not exposed to it to fight it. The body doesn't know what to do with it. And it doesn't, it's not been trained to do it like we have. That's, that's a strong opinion that's gaining a lot of scientific back, backing. Yeah. So Purelling ourselves isn't actually the answer. I agree. Washing hands is good because all that is just not germs, right? But the, the Purell thing is different because Purell is like, and it actually, the bacteria can adopt, uh, evolve to yeah. the, the actual antibacteria. Washing your hands is just cleansing yourself. Yeah, no, I agree completely, man. Yeah. And that's why I think. Fuck yeah. That's why I agree that Purell is bad or any antibacterial lotion whatever that shit's called and they're making it more and more available at every little station and locate and and why it's the military industrial complex actually it's the antibacterial industrial complex what i thought i had to go to work consumers past week uh for like a couple two hours and check me out and uh I thought it was so funny because I was waiting for the phone, the company, the phone company guy to install some shit. And I was waiting in the lobby and there on the wall, there's an antibacterial dispenser, right? You just put your hand under it and it squirts, right? And it said Purell on it or something, right? Some, you know, name that I recognize. Above it, there was a big eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that was laminated. It said hand sanitizer with an arrow. And I, I was like, no, I thought it was fucking shampoo. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Money's gonna come out of it. I just come on, man. But I agree with you that that was a horrible story time. I'm so sorry. My turn. Oh yeah. Consider we're going on a fucking tangent, boys and girls. Are you ready for this fucking guy? No. It's not even close to anything we're talking about, but oh, it's right near thing. Okay. Why hand sanitizer with the arrows pointed there? I write an email in the subject heading. Three. P- Three questions. You put three questions in the subject. I write. I write three questions in the oh, subject I heading. You- no, I write the. T- I write the word three. three I write the word. I thought you went okay. I'm I sorry. write the ra- the ahead. phrase three questions. I love. I we talked about putting the full yeah. email in the subject heading. We know that that's that is sick and wrong and terrible. Not approved. <laughs> Uh, that's, no, I write the that's phrase. Like trying to get COVID from a spit cup. I write the phrase three questions. I number them in the email. Number one, did you get the new thing we sent you? Yes or no. Number two, if you did, have you put it into the machine? Same thingy. Yes or no. Number three. This is going to be great. I love it. If you've done a, if you've done one and two, is it giving you a problem still? Yes or no. The response. We've. We've had it taken out and shaken multiple times before putting back in. It keeps telling us to, to replace it. The, the new one or the old one? You don't, you have no idea. Ta-da. How- so this is how humanity works. They, they, I, I, I actually tell them I'm going to let them know three questions. I number them and they answer none of them. They answer the fourth question, which I didn't have. Like, this is how we communicate now. This, 
This kind of goes back to all of it. Our we're, our communication <laughs> skills have really Dude, atrophied. Please a little bit. tell me you copied your three questions and pasted it in your reply to them. Well, I just and reply in the thread. It. I just reply in the thread. No, I I said I called my manager and I said, "Hey, um, there's an email in the main inbox that, that you can see. I refuse to uh, to acknowledge it anymore. Please take care of it because I won't." I. I'm honest. I, because you don't want my answer. You don't want me to respond to that. You don't want to lose a customer. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't want me to do it. And what's really cool about that is I acknowledge that I would be callous with my response. Therefore, I'm saving us by by making myself go away. Why are you holding the stick of fury? You'll know in a moment. I don't. Are you going to hit it again to yeah, close out story correct. time? Do it. Are you bro. done yet? Are you done? Yeah, that are you was done? it. Are you done? Saying- Oh no. Yay! What's funny is I listened to the one we just the one we just posted this yeah, week yeah. about shit. It wasn't about shit. I was like we did one about shit. What we did? Oh, three apps, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the first time I heard the open close of the story time. I didn't know you did it until the last time we talked I've about it. I've always been doing it. <laughs> Mind blown. I didn't know. I only opened it. But that was a, that was a dumb story time too. But all it is is like you can tell, like you can tell someone exactly what your gonna intentions are, n- label them, and you still only get what they're thinking about. I know, that sounded like a bitch fest. I didn't mean it like that. So you can. I just meant like I get that a lot when I can I can give someone very clear things and then I get an abstract answer. It hurts, man. Hey, hey. Hey. Yeah. Stay on target. No, we're done. <laughs> I'm out. Please tip your bartenders and your oh, servers. Oh shit! You fucking Vegas lunatic! Next week. You fucking lunatic! Vegas next week. Who's coming? Who's coming? Oh, this will be. Po- I'm going to be watching after- the Masters. Well, this will be posted after after I get back. So I don't think anybody's worried about that. If we can go, because it'll go. Don't forget all your masks, all your face panties. I never shared about that, and we'll t- we might talk about that to close it out. But go ahead. No, we won't. It's, well, right. it's COVID related, so. Fuck. So let's wrap this fucker up. All right. Going forward, what do we do? What do we do as a society to help people that are affected with mental illness or OCD or anxiety or depression or worse because of because because of COVID because they've been locked down or because they've been stuck at home and or they don't haven't seen their brother or their best friend or their mom or their mom has the mom is in assisted living and they haven't seen them what do we do to help these people and and we don't know how long this is going to last either so in a year hmm. in 2021 in I november do. it could be the same or it could be worse or it could be better we we don't know dude you don't yes, have a crystal do. ball okay lies all right what do we do to help these people? There's a lot of ways to help. We can always talk about throwing money at the problem and having hotlines available and all this stuff. But truth be told, we as people, as social animals who know that we need other social animals, as small communities, this little neighborhood in which we're sitting, right? Yeah. We did we say we we're broadcasting live from oh, the treehouse in Phoenix? We did today? not. Man. Well, but, well, we are. Yes, we're and always we're in, in the, the treehouse. Tree okay, we're broadcasting, li- <laughs> broadcasting live from the treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona, from the home offices in Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah, I did the list, bitches. Okay, um, so this little neighborhood, we need to, we need walk in the middle of the street with a megaphone. Hey, neighbors, my name's, my name is Chick Mark, and I am your neighbor. I would like for us to go sit in this lawn during the day. On on Saturday between 2 and 5 p.m., we'll be 10 feet apart. We'll put up a movie screen. We all sit there. We all we all just share time together. And I think I dig it. you have to start there. You can't. I'm. It's hard because it makes it paints me like an asshole. You can't always just expect others to fix your problems. No shit. That's why I love you so much, because as much as you care, you also understand your personal accountability, personal responsibility, and role that you have to play, right? You get it. 
That's why we love each other. That's why we're so respectful of each other. But that's how it has to happen. The community has to say, I know we can't be with all, but why, why can't we just be together? You know, we'll, we'll trade recipes. We'll yeah. do, you know, what we, we won't, we won't do an actual uh, potluck. potluck, but we'll trade recipes like a recipe potluck. Hey, try that. And you try this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, but it, it does have to be person to person. It can't be some van driving through going, we're here to help you. Like a lot of people don't know about the resources or they're afraid to take advantage of them. Right. Or if people don't help themselves, will n you have to help yourself? You have to at least ask for the help. If you don't, and I and I tell, I mean, I figured this out the hard way, and I tell friends of mine, if you don't take care of yourself, n no one else is going to take care of you. Yeah. And I and there and there's some people in my life that have amazing people in their lives taking care of them. I'm not worried about those because they're super lucky. But the few friends of mine that don't have somebody looking out for them, those are the people I'm worried about. Like, look, you're an amazing person. You have to take care of yourself. You And there's, there's going to be millions of people out there that have to take – and I'm talking about emotionally, spiritually. Like, dude, it, I mean, if, if that means praying, that's great. If that means – Meditating, that's great. If that means go getting your chakras cleared once a week or getting a massage or doing something nice for yourself just so that you feel more well-adjusted in society, that's great. But go fucking tweet me. You know, shit, I don't care. You know, we're all, we're all the same. That's how I look at it. We're all in this stupid rock for a very short period of time. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Very well said. Welcome. Um, to add to that, um, five years ago, we're, there's a reason you and I are sitting here right now, and it's only because because you plugged all this equipment in. Oh yeah, an electric, an electricity, electricity, and the ceiling fan, and being in the tr and having a treehouse. Yeah, true. Oh. Um, I was at the bottom of my despair. I was, I was ready to die, man. I was ready. I had suicidal ideations. I did not want to be here. Knowing I didn't want to be here, I made the ask to someone who referred me to someone and that saved my life. To that that stop that initially stopped me from having, you know what I mean, from doing it. Yeah. It 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 uh put a tourniquet on it. Like it uh put it up, it splinted it, right? I get you. And then you stopped the bleeding. But but beyond that, I knew that you need work to reverse that, right? And in my opinion, I'm the healthiest emotionally I've felt, and I'm in in my life. I just I just am. I'm in love. Um, I love you. This. Oh, is, thank God you're not in love with me. I was ready to great. freak the fuck like, out, dude. We're we're getting we're getting like love from people we don't even know. People are being very kind and encouraging and supportive. Right, we mentioned yes. the we mentioned the one thing that was one thing ever, yeah, 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 yeah. one ever. That's not that's nothing, man. Yeah, it's so it's been beautiful. Yeah, but I couldn't have gotten to here if I knew that it was over back then. If I didn't do something yes. myself with it, yes. And I hate. I know some people are incapable of helping of getting help or helping themselves. Right, they just don't know or whatever. Those are the people we have to reach out to, right? Those yeah. are the people we have to get. But that's not most of us, I don't think. I think many of us are very capable of putting, you know, getting ourselves to start getting better. Yes. That's all. Yes. And you kind of, another great transition because I think there is, I think there is hope out there. Because I've seen it on social media. I'm nodding, yes. And I, I, I've seen, you know, Instagram where people are posting, hey, we did, just like you said, hey, we did a neighborhood thing where, you know, we did a social distance Halloween or we did a, we did a, you know, whatever in the, in the neighborhood where we got together and we did this or that and we all stayed safe and this, and I love those things where there are, there is hope, right? There is, hey, we're, you know what, we're, we're all going to be okay. It's going to suck for a while, but. We're going to be okay. And I love the fact that even on the heavy, the liquid metal channel on Sirius XM, the heaviest of the heavy, 
which I listen to almost every day, that the main DJ, Jose, says every day, he says, thank you to the medical professionals. Thank you to the servers out there that are taking care of us. Thank you for the the chefs and the cooks that are delivering food to the hospitals. Thank you to all those people that are the unsung heroes that are making our world a better place by doing little tiny things. And they, they, those people find solace in music and they find solace in helping one another. And thank you for listening to the station, this and that. But he goes out of his way to thank all those people every single day. And that shows me there's a little bit of hope out there. And that's, I love that. There's a lot less despair than there is hope. The problem is it, no one's shining a light on it. I mean, that's it, why I brought it up. Dave. I, I swear I saw a statistic where like 98% of Twitter content is made by like 2% of the people, 2% of the population. And you're like, Holy fuck. Right. Like sure. If you think about that, 2% is still a big number, still like 1.4 million people. Right. But making up 98% of all the content on it, that's yeah. pretty, that's, that's very it's a sizable, understood. very concentrated, yes, right? Sir. So, and that's what engages, right? Uh, anger engages much more than love. But, but we are so new in this podcast community, for example, right? Yeah. At Beyond Evil Podcast. They're awesome. She was brand new and she somehow found us or something and she made this really nice comment and her she wasn't she didn't have her first episode till halloween right mm -hmm. halloween night i think so i tweeted hey check out at beyond evil when when i saw it, spooky horror i'm looking to self promote of course but when i see a spooky horror one i send that i send you know i at beyond evil right yeah when i see a stem one our crack research assistant i send that one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um there was a woman who lived in israel and i sent that to our our super fan yeah. you know like and that's how it is and it's it's really beautiful it it really is and it's actually i thought getting on i did i mean it's exhausting to be on there because i do see all the stuff that comes through mm -hmm. i don't i still see it i can't unsee it. it's there i'm looking for something but it still pass, passes my eyeballs right i love when when we see that positivity of like podcast backing podcast and i like, agree hey, what do you do and you know. yeah 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 i i agree so much because it can't we're all in this thing together. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, hey, if you do good, the likelihood of us doing good is pretty high. Yeah. So. A rising tide does does lift all ships. And it, it's funny because it used to be competitive. Do you, yeah. I mean, we're competitive, but like we're competitive and we're going to do everything we can to make our show what we feel is the best it is. But our show is not like anybody else. No. We and are nobody's niche. like us because we're both so weird. Yeah, we're just who weird. wears a pink we, death metal shirt we're weird. with oh, rainbows? You, you got to show it up, bro. Rainbows. And you got to stand up. Come on, I'm stand gonna up. tweet it later. Don't worry about it. We'll tweet it, but oh, I'll tweet it on the day this it's released, bro. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like to that to that point, right? Um, it's just really encouraging because we're not competitive here. It's every, I know there's limited time. But I don't need you to be lower for me to be higher. Correct. But a lot of people don't understand that. No, they don't. The old world does not. The old world still sees it. And that's one of the things where when we talk about philosophies, for example, I am believe this, but I don't do that. And you can't paint me in any corner. Like, I do not have a label. Right. And I looked. It's funny. I just updated my voter registration card. I, I was registered Republican at 18 people. I'm fucking 46, okay? So everybody just slow down. I, it says no political party on my new one because I, I removed it. Awesome. I, I went, I, I totally forgot I did that. But when I referenced it, when I voted this week, I was like, I kind of smiled, nodded at myself. Like I was a little proud of myself. I was like, that's, that is, that is who I am. You know what I mean? Anyway, but we have these ideas, right? But we, yeah, we, we have to do it ourselves, you know, but there's a lot of love out there. There's a lot of love out there, which means there's hope. And that's the, which means that's hope. the point is that, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there, there's the possibility of a lot of negative side effects of COVID, you know, psychologically and, and you know, anxiety and depression and a lot of bad things. And that sucks. And I, I really hope everyone deals with those things and is okay. And I wish everyone the best, but reach out, you know, be aware of your neighbors. Like, Hey man, I, I haven't seen Frank in a week. I should, I should go 
drop a six pack off at his door. You know, I sh- I should reach out to my friends. I haven't talked to like Yusef in North Carolina. Hadn't talked to him in six weeks. Left him a voicemail. You know what I mean? That sort of shit. Like we don't we don't know how everyone's doing. It can't a phone call is not hard. A text is not hard. And you know we have friends all over the world, not just from this, but uh, you know from our yeah. But- Think about it, how we connect with Craig Hollander in Indonesia, yeah, exactly. of all places. Right, like, exactly. Where are these downloads from Indonesia coming? Right. But the point is that there's hope yeah. regarding this. And oh, that's, that's the best thing is that, yeah, there's, possi- it's global. there's possibilities of, of bad side effects or long-term effects, excuse me. And, and that sucks, but there's hope too. And that's what I think is awesome is that, is that we're all going to be okay. And we all need to watch out for one another. And that's all I have to say about that. May I end on one note? No. You always ask, just fucking it's, spit it out. Stop three, asking questions. Three parts. Oh, fuck. There's no. a reason I if ask you questions. Say, if you have three parts, then you just need to say something totally random and not address any of those. The reason I ask. Is there three parts in the subject title no. of the email? Do you know why I ask? No. Okay. The I don't want to know. <laughs> the reason I ask, I I, the reason I ask if I can ask things or the reason I ask if I may say something yeah, how's that going? Other than just stepping on your toes, which 99% happens other times, is because now you're, by saying yes, you're now open to me saying something. If I just say something, who says you're open to that? But I'm me never asking, open to it. When, you, when I ask and you say yes, you've already opened it up spiritually, my friend, and energetically. I hope, but I always say no, and you tell me anyway. I tell them anyway. Okay, get to the point. Go outside for a bit. Yeah, right. Go in the sun. Get some UV rays. Not not at not at night. Go out during the <laughs> sun time. You need UV the rays. Sun time. Take vitamin D. It's like eight bucks for like a thousand pills on Amazon. I don't want to plug Amazon, but just get it. It's like five thousand I use to take one in the morning, one at night. Take those, go out in the sun, get that vitamin D and zinc and vitamin C. Those are the four things you need. Sunlight, vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, vitamin D and zinc. It won't, it's not a cure, but it has, has scientifically shown to help stave off this thing that we're all, of which we're all afraid right now. Yeah. That, that's it, man. Oh, okay. Well, that has been another knocked conscious from the treehouse. Thank you for listening, can, everybody. Can we close it up again? What was uh, November 7th, 2020? Thank you for hanging out with us at knocked Conscious. Uh, hang on. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Yeah, I was waiting for you Be to say that to the whole other. time. <laughs>